this is going to happen again. It's going to happen again because Ledger is not the last company that's going to get hacked. So you got hacked. There's nothing you can do about it now. Um, we're not going to be changing all of our phones, emails, and home addresses as a result of this. We have to be um, patient and calm. How do we prevent getting into these databases in the future? How do we disappear from the database? And I think this is Jameson um, leading this answer. Yeah, uh, so the the short version for pretty much all of the privacy protections that I've put into play are to use various type of proxies. There is, you know, there's digital internet proxies, of course, to, to route your internet traffic uh, through third parties so that it's not clear what your home IP address is. Uh, when it comes to other things like physical mail, you can use proxies like post office boxes, private mailboxes, essentially, you know, any address other than your home address. Now, in, in can, some cases... Can we, can we expand yeah. a bit on that? Um, in the US, there is a whole category of what are called commercial mail receiving agencies, or CMRAs. These are private companies that can receive mail on your behalf once you've proven that you are who you say you are. You do that with a notarized form. And then they will scan the front of all of your email and send you an email um, showing you the outside of the envelope and then you can click and say shred it or forward it to another address or scan it for me so I can see it inside. I've been using that now for eight years. It's a godsend. Uh, all of my mail goes to one of these facilities, in fact several of these facilities, and never to my own address. Um, I don't know that these exist everywhere around the world. Um, so you may not be able to find them in your own country. Some countries require you to use your real name. Um, you don't have to. So um, for example, let's say you order a widget from Amazon. You don't have to have it sent to you. You know how you can send a gift to your auntie and you can put her name on the recipient's shipping address? Well, you can put a completely fake name and the post service will be quite happy to deliver the package. So I never put my real name on shipping addresses. Um, yeah, even for <laughs> signature required stuff, I've never found that to be a problem. I've never had someone actually try to ID me to make sure that the name that I give them matches the one on the package or the signature. And, and of course, you can sign whatever gibberish you want to. Nobody's checking that either. So I would say, um, of all of the privacy things that I've done, like the real world operational security stuff over the past few years, the hardest thing to really get used to is just straight up lying without even thinking about it. If you are dealing with you know, a third party, um, some sort of company or just someone who you're probably never going to see again, there's really nothing to gain by giving them your real identity and there's so much to lose. And so once you get ingrained into that mindset, then you stop feeling bad about being dishonest about you know, giving your real name to different entities. Okay, so let me give you very specific examples. When I got docs in 2013, I stopped giving my real name everywhere, uh, unless the form um, says, under penalty of perjury, I certify that, blah, 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 blah. Or I have just in the last few seconds said, I swear to say the whole truth, like um, because I'm in front of an immigration officer, I'm testifying, I'm being asked by someone who I cannot lie to. You cannot lie to the police, that is a crime. Um, but under all other circumstances, Starbucks says, who is this coffee for? Montezuma. Um, the, the, I go to, into um, a hotel and they say, you know, who, who should we say is calling? Bob. Um, I order my pizza, it's for Helen. I, everything I do, I give a fake name. The person waiting for me at the airport with a car is holding a sign up that says John Peters um, or Jimmy something. It never does my real name appear on any of those things. The same thing with the address. If 
you have a form where you are putting in a physical address, you have to choose. It's either a real address with a fake name, or it's a fake address with a real name and the address goes to a forwarding agency. It is never both real at the same time. And you can do this simply with things like, you know, I order pizza. Well, I can order the pizza under a fake name to my real address, or I can order it with my real name to the next door neighbor's address and wait until someone shows up from a car and say, no, no, it's over here, and have them walk one door over. Um, really, really simple stuff like that. Lie, lie, lie. And in some cases, um, you know, especially things like hotel check-ins, like places where they actually ID you, then you can at least protect your home address. By, I usually give my passport because that doesn't have an address on it instead of giving a driver license, for example. Yeah, I think that's an important one, guys. Keep in mind that your state ID has your address on it. Your passport does not. And this comes in handy in a lot of cases. Um, especially when KYCing at an exchange, for example. Um, and then the other thing I want to just add on to what Jameson said is, yes, it's uncomfortable to just flat out lie sometimes, but um, I think there's also this fear, right? Like when a form asks you for your phone number because you just ordered a ledger, you put your phone number because you're like, well, what happens if I don't put my phone number? Are they going to call me? I don't know, but then maybe I don't get my letter. Okay, I'll just put my phone number in. No, just don't put your phone number in. In what universe has anyone ever called you to be like, hey, your package is not going to arrive today? Oh. Like, <laughs> all it does is get put into various databases and right. get sent literally around the world with your name and your address and your phone number publicly displayed on the label. Don't put your real phone number. Make up 20 digits. Just do it. Same with the names. Pretend you're a spy. You get to make up a new name every single day. It's super, super fun. Okay, if say, anybody uh, <laughs> has an idea on how we handle the fact that the chat has been completely inundated and overrun by scammers, it's gone. It's completely destroyed. Yeah. We cannot it's use bubble. it. Uh-oh. Uh, I uh -huh. don't even know how to turn it off now, so. I was yeah. gonna say the only way you can solve it at this point because we poked the bear, as my security guy said, when we, yeah. <laughs> when we did the, the, this. The one thing about the fake names, though, is that if, uh, for example, no one that I meet, you know, physically uh, knows my real name. I, instead of coming up with a different pseudonym uh, for every interaction, I, I stick to a few so that I don't get confused because it would get really awkward trying to keep track of a hundred different pseudonyms. Yes, yeah. I have had that where they go, you know, uh, latte is ready for John, and I'm like oblivious and don't even realize <laughs> they're calling my third fake name. Um, <clears throat> All right, so um, fake names all around. By the way, this also helps with phishing attacks. All of the phishing attacks that happened to me from Ledger came to me and they said, hey, Peter, your device has been compromised. Um, Peter is the fake name I gave to Ledger. Uh, obviously, that's- I use, I use Andreas. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's <laughs> great. Um, so, um, the same thing with the address that I used. It's, it's not an address that I live at. If anybody wants to visit that, they're going to find some other people. Please don't do that. They are innocents who have nothing to do and not involved in, in crypto. Um, all right, so um, what's next? Um, disposable emails. Um, if you don't know how to do this, there are great services out there. Probably the most common one is a service called Mailinator. Um, we'll put the link in the description. This allows you to create a disposable email that you use once. You can use it to verify things. You can even use it later to do some kind of password recovery or something like that. Um, uh, obviously, you wouldn't use that for uh, a service that you care about, like your bank or your exchange. Um, what you can also do is you can go and buy a domain that is not associated with you. Um, and then create email addresses that do not reveal your identity. Um, so they can be email addresses that are just generic names. So you can be Peter at uh, greenpasturefarmingdublin.com. Uh, so you, cr you get a really long domain that nobody's registered, greenpasturefarming.com, whatever. Um, and it's, it looks like a regular email. 
um, but it's not. You use it only for these services. You have a forwarder set up. Anything at greenpasturefarming.com comes to your correct email address. Uh, and so you can keep rotating the thing that's before the at I do this. Um, any other advice for becoming invisible? Mail forwarding, phone forwarding, email forwarding, and lying. Did we miss anything? Yeah. And in a lot of like a lot of different identities. So when I first started just flat out lying about who I was and whatever, um, I wasn't a hundred percent comfortable with doing like the throwaway, right? Because I was like, I might need this later. It took me a while to get over the fact that like you never need it later, but whatever. Is you can just spin up emails in a whole bunch of different identities and then use those. Um, and you can reuse them just understanding that those, each identity you make is linked to its other activities. So like one of my first like fake identities, if you go on how I've been fond, you'll see it's been fond a whole bunch. Um, but that's okay because it's all the same fake identity. Um, however, like the more identities you have, the more comfortable you get doing this and the more comfortable you get just like throwing them out there into the world and realizing that it's not going to have any bad repercussions in the future the better off you're going to be in the long term. And that's what's important. Yeah, so fill, fill the databases with junk. Yes. Yeah, that's that's a good start. And you know, this is one of those bottomless rabbit holes where if you really want to go to the extreme, then you can't have any publicly registered stuff under your real name. And that was the hard part for me was getting all of my property um, not owned by me legally, but owned by other entities that are tied to me. But that that legal tie is not in the public domain. And um, and really, the hardest thing that I ran into was the driver license issue. And and unfortunately, in most states, that's going to result in you having to set up a quote unquote legal residence that you know you don't actually hang out at. So these things can get really expensive, especially if you end up having to uh, hire attorney and uh, trust managers and, and all of that stuff. You should try the driver's license now with COVID though, because I currently have a valid driver's license that's completely invalid because the DMV is not open. I'm sure that you could probably do the same. Well, um, I'm <clears throat> a bit reluctant to say this publicly, but um, for the past 10 years, um, what I've done is whenever I have been on the verge of moving to a new address, which at some point was every year, um, I would um, renew my driver's license with proof of address the week before leaving, have the address that I'm about to leave on, then live at the new address until one week before leaving with an address that is wrong on my driver's license, and the week before leaving, renewing, proving my new address, and then leaving again. Um, and so that just left a trail of dead end addresses. Uh, and this was during the time that I had been physically threatened. So it was a necessity for my own security. Um, and that, that, that's how I never ever have my actual current address. They're all the legal addresses that I lived in, um, but they're the legal addresses that I no longer lived in once they appeared on the license. Um, and that's one way to do it. Of course, passwords, passports don't have addresses on them. You know, once you start down this rabbit hole, as Jameson said, there's a lot you can do. You also realize how much um, the world is designed to try to pin you down uh, and find where you are and what you did and who you are. And, and a lot of it's completely unnecessary security theater. It has nothing to do with security. Um, and people just mindlessly follow these rules for no reason whatsoever. And if you just stop answering the questions truthfully, there's no, nothing really happens. Hi, thanks for watching the video. I'm Andreas Antonopoulos. I'm the author of Mastering Bitcoin, Mastering Ethereum, and the Internet of Money series. If you'd like to support my mission of bringing education about Bitcoin and open blockchains to as many people as possible under open, free, Creative Commons licenses, please consider subscribing to my channel and supporting me on patreon.com slash A-A-N-T-O-N-O-P. Thank you.